All right, so I'm just going to show you how to do one more of these um, questions on this game um, that you can find by looking at the class website or clicking at the link um, right above this video. Um, I'm going to do level 10, um, which is right on the back of your packet. If you want to follow along on the back of your packet, it looks like this. Um, this level is a little bit different because you're trying to get this guy to catch some ice cream cones. Notice if we hit ready and go, all these ice cream cones are going to fall and he is not in the right place to catch them. So we need to move him so that he can catch all of those ice cream cones. It's basically the same idea though. We're trying to use this line to figure out initial positions, velocities, and so on. Um, so we're going to start by, uh, by annotating that graph, um, which looks like this. We'll, we'll uh, make that triangle that we know we need to make. Um, and I'm going to draw an arrow and an arrow here. Notice we've got two sections of this line. We can't think of it as just one line. We need two sections to this line. And my rise for the graph is the displacement. That is, triangle X change in position means displacement. And this is a rise from 0 to 5 meters, which is equal to negative 5 meters. My run is equal to 0 to 5 seconds. This is going to be the run is equal to the time interval of 5 seconds. Now that's real straightforward. I can tell that from looking at the graph, but I also want to show that I understand where those calculations come from. I'm going to show that here. So I'm going to calculate a time interval from 0 seconds to 5 seconds. It looks like this. Triangle T equals T final minus T initial. That is 5 seconds, that is the time, the clock reading, when the slope ends, minus 0 seconds, which, as we already know, was 5 seconds. Um, we, can, we did this before in class for displacement, but we can do it for um, time interval just the same way. Um, we can calculate the displacement just like we did. The change in position equals x final minus x initial, which will be the final value of that position is negative 5 meters minus 0 meters equals negative 5 meters. Not so complicated there. Um, but down here we need to use these two numbers to calculate an average of velocity. And we remember velocity, the average, is the rise over the run which in this case is equal to the change in x over the change in t. That is, it's the change in position over the change in clock reading. Those are the two numbers that we calculated here. So we're just going to plug them in. Negative 5 meters divided by 5 seconds equals negative 1 meters per second. Um, last thing we want to do is make an algebraic model to actually fit this using the things that you were just looking at on that homework. Um, we want to use our initial position and our velocity to fit something that looks like this. Position equals velocity times t plus x initial. In this particular case, the velocity, as we know, is negative 1 meter per second. We're going to leave t as a variable and we'll add 0 meters. You can actually leave this off if you wanted to, but notice my initial position for this is going to be 0 meters. That is the algebraic model that I need. Um, now notice if I just type in um, an initial velocity of negative 1 meters and I hit this thing, um, ooh, sorry, whoops, I, I hit negative 2 instead of negative 1, my bad. Um, if I hit this, notice this guy will catch the ice cream cones on the left, but if he keeps moving in that direction, he's going to drop all the rest of the ice cream cones. We need to figure out what his velocity is going to change to by making another triangle and another calculation here. So let's try that. 
we want to annotate that slope again um, with two arrows and say this is a displacement from negative five meters all the way up to four meters. That's going negative five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the displacement is nine meters in the positive direction. Um, and the change in time is from five seconds to eight seconds. Um, that would be an increase of three seconds. You'll want to be able to show that you know how to calculate these nine meters and three meters by using these equations. So if you're not sure on where those come from, you may want to, on a piece of scratch paper, actually show me that you know how to do that. That'll be important for the test tomorrow. But the last thing is to just say, all right, the average velocity equals nine meters over three seconds, which equals three meters per second. That means that at a clock reading of five seconds, this guy has to change direction and speed up. That is, um, sorry, we're getting back to level one. He starts out at one, negative one meter per second, but at a clock reading of five seconds, he changes his velocity to positive three meters per second. Now, we want to answer this question right here. How does the motion of the object that is the little fuzzy guy change at, oops, I'm sorry, this should say t equals five seconds. Um, so watch him carefully. Um, as, he's chew as he's picking these ice, cre ice cream cones, we need to figure out which of those answers are correct. So he starts out by moving to the left, catching all these ice cream cones, and then he increases speed and changes direction. So on a question like this, we would want to say he changes direction and um, speeds up. So if you want more practice with this, you can do every single one of these questions. I would spend less time on these questions over here, which involve you like kind of like moving him back and forth on the skateboard. Those can be fun, but it's up to you whether you want to spend time on those because they're going to be less um, important for the test itself. As you're working on these, make sure that you actually do the calculations rather than just guessing and checking. Um, guessing and checking is helpful, but it's not nearly as helpful as actually trying to do these calculations so that you're ready to do them on the test tomorrow.